Animated desktop icons and cursors are a feature that time has largely forgotten. So in this video, we'll make two brand new transparent animations based on a comic series I draw called Night Owl Tech Support. On Windows, animated cursors and icons use the .ani file extension. ANI files are referred to as a container format. An ANI container stores several individual pictures in bitmap form, instructions on their order, how the pictures should be sequenced, and the frame rate measured in 1 60th a second, or a jiffy, they play back at. Once all of this is put together into a format that the computer can process, it creates the illusion of movement. One of the earliest and most prolific examples of animated icons and cursors on Windows came from Moon Valley Software, a company that will be mentioned frequently throughout this segment. Moon Valley first released a software suite called Icon Tamer for Windows 3.0 in 1991. In addition to featuring several designer icons for products like Lotus and Coral WordPerfect, Icon Tamer featured the ability to edit icons and convert them between monochrome, CGA, 8-color, and 16-color formats. Icon Tamer was followed up by version 1 of the Icon Do It utility, which was first released in May of 1992 for Windows 3.0 and 3.1. In addition to having over 200 designer icons, many of which were made for popular software of the time, Icon Do It introduced animated icons and cursors for the first time. According to the specs, the base requirements are Windows 3.0 and a 286, but a 486 is recommended for its ability to handle dozens more animations on screen without overtaxing the CPU. The following year, in March of 1993, Moon Valley released Icon Do It version 2. Icon Do It 2 features a more sophisticated UI a drop-down menu from the taskbar with pop-up dialog boxes for options management, and several additional animated icons. It appears that they struck a deal with Norton for version 2, as many of the new icons made were specifically for Norton utilities. Both versions of Icon Do It released before the ANI file format was established for Windows, and instead they used two proprietary formats for animation, that's .mve for icons, and .tun for cursors. According to the third revision of the Microsoft Multimedia Standards Update, Microsoft first implemented the ANI file format into Windows NT 3.1 during April of 1993, when it was still under development. To touch briefly on this document, it focuses on media-centric file types that adhere to the Resource Interchange File Format, or RIF, standards, first established through a partnership between IBM and Microsoft in 1990. A few notable file types that adhere to this format standard are AVI, WAVE, and Google's WebP. Windows NT 3.1 was released to the public in July of 1993, and in addition to being the first in the NT line following the split with IBM and OS 2, it was the first version of Windows where animated cursors were implemented directly into the UI, and they could be previewed in the Cursors menu. This also appeared in NT 3.5, and 3.51, where it is virtually identical. With the release of Windows 95, animations were integrated deeper into Windows Explorer. Starting with 95, animations could be previewed directly from the Properties menu in their entirety. The Windows 95 ANI implementation made its way to NT 4.0 in 1996, and every major update of Windows released since then behaves in almost the exact same way. In each, Windows inherently lacks any utilities to work with the files, but it recognizes what they are and shows them as one-frame thumbnails. Guaranteed, Windows 11 is no different. 
While Windows previews the animations directly inside of certain dialog boxes, like the cursors and file properties menus, there was never a direct implementation of animated desktop icons from Microsoft. Icon Do It never appeared to receive a mainstream upgraded release for Windows 95 and its new interface, but through a convoluted mix of circumstances, a variant of Icon Do It exists for select Windows 95 PCs. As mentioned previously, Moon Valley Software's Icon Do It utility for Windows 3.x allowed for animated icons directly on the desktop, and it did so as far back as 1992. But these animations were in a proprietary file format that predates the set of fixed standards used in every version of Windows released since 1993. It is important to note that the set of standards A and I adhere to came out of a coalition between IBM and Microsoft, first established in 1990. At the time, IBM and Microsoft had a healthier working relationship as partners in co-developing OS2, which had been touted by both as the operating system of the future. By 1991, however, disagreements and conflicts of interest led Microsoft to eject itself from co-developing OS2, leaving IBM as its sole developer. Microsoft turned its focus towards developing Windows NT, which did become the operating system of the future. In a drastic switch up, IBM and Microsoft went from being partners in the operating systems market to direct competitors, and their relationship naturally soured. Into the early 90s, OS2 started being marketed as a better DOS than DOS, and a better Windows than Windows, and IBM gained much more interest in competing with Microsoft in other markets. A good example would be their acquisition of Lotus in 1995. Lotus was one of the premier office productivity suites of the 1980s and early 1990s, and IBM wanted it to go up against Microsoft Office directly. When Windows 95 released, IBM was the last major PC vendor to sign on for it. IBM embraced Windows 95 for their Aptiva line reluctantly and on their own terms in a way where they bundled it with alternative software anywhere they could. In addition to the Aptiva line prominently featuring Lotus, it also came bundled with a variant of 1994's Hitchhiking on the Information Highway, a popular software suite of alternative web browsers developed by none other than Moon Valley Software. According to a 1997 interview in Dan Logan's Computer Resource Guide, San Luis Obispo and Santa Maria, with Greg Chavez, then CFO of Moon Valley, the company entered into an OEM licensing agreement with IBM in 1995. This was right around the time that IBM acquired Lotus. According to Greg, Icon Do It sold millions of copies, and Moon Valley was eager to sign on with a big company like IBM because having a retail presence as a small company was a lot of work. Rightly so. Greg went on to comment that Big Blue was looking for some cool desktop stuff for its new Aptiva models, and it tapped Moon Valley to come up with some creative ideas. As a result, Moon Valley upgraded Icon Do It, and the new version was exclusive to the Aptiva line. This release, which could arguably be considered Icon Do It 3.0, was renamed to the IBM Aptiva Desktop Customization Utility. In addition to being upgraded for Windows 95's interface, it included start menu banner animations and file launch animations. Additionally, all the animations that used to be in the proprietary formats were converted into standard ANI files that, just like Windows 10 loading cursors, can be read in select dialog boxes by practically every build of Windows since 95 and NT4. While the OEM exclusivity deal that Moon Valley signed into appeared to be a great thing at the time, in hindsight, it made the utility that they built fall into somewhat of an obscure place. 
In a CNET article dated November 6, 1997, concerning poor sales of the Aptiva and a growing sub-$1,000 PC market, Kevin Haas, then a computer analyst with International Data Corp., stated the following. IBM was trying to turn the Aptiva line into the Lexus of the computer world. The computers came with the best processors and were designed with an eye on style more suited to a furniture maker. As a result, even at the high end, the less stylish but less expensive high-end models from Compaq and Hewlett-Packard sold better. Sales of the Aptiva were quite low, and it led IBM to partner up with Acer to then produce lower budget variants into 1997. Since Moon Valley's significant enhancements to the Windows 95 UI were locked into this licensing agreement and the brand sold rather poorly, they were for the most part relegated to obscurity. Until now at least, let's make some new animations. To splice the frames of our animations together and create some new ANI files, we'll use Anatuner 2.0. Anatuner has been around for many years. The newest release came out in 2009. It still supports Windows 95, yet it runs perfectly fine on new builds of Windows like 10 and 11. It should be noted that there are some negative reviews on CNET from around the time that it came out. These reviews accuse it of hiding either a Trojan or an info stealer in its uninstall file. Most of these reviews mention it being flagged by Norton Antivirus. I scanned the install file on VirusTotal, and out of 66 scans, I got one red flag from Zillia and 65 green check marks implying that it's safe. To see if there was any legitimacy to the red flag, I installed Attituner 2.0 and in a few older versions of Windows using VirtualBox. After installing it on NT4, XP Service Pack 3, and Windows 10, each with a live connection to the internet, I was unable to find any malware, suspicious executables and temp, or registry tweaks it was accused of sneaking in by the CNET reviews. I'm 99% certain that Attituner was falsely flagged, but it is closed source software and it hasn't been maintained in a long time, so either way I would advise you to be forewarned and proceed with caution. Excluding Anatuner, Windows features just about everything you need to create and test animations by default. My method was as followed. I used MS Paint to draw each frame at high magnification, saved each frame as a PNG file with an assigned number, and used Windows Photo Viewer to manually preview the frames in a sequence. If you're on Windows 10 or 11, you will more than likely have the Photos app as your default image viewer, and that should work just fine. I much prefer the Windows 7 style Photo Viewer, and it's fairly easy to add back into Windows 10, so I opted to use that instead. Anatuner has its own previewer for ANI files, but it can also output GIF files, which are much more easily read by default Windows tools. To make sure that the background in each animation is properly transparent, we'll create a bare-bones HTML document in Notepad so we can view a GIF output of the animations atop different background colors using Internet Explorer 11. Up first is an animation made out of only four frames. This animation is light, because it was created to be used as a desktop icon on the IBM Aptiva 2140, recently restored on the channel. As a desktop icon, it probably shouldn't be excessively busy and distracting. The second one is a 16-frame animation intended to be used as a mouse cursor when Windows is busy or loading files. We only need to set a few baseline standards to make our animated icons. For one, every frame is 32 by 32 pixels. Every frame is going to use fuchsia as the background color for transparency. And each picture will be saved as a 256 color bitmap file to ensure compatibility with Windows 95. These standards came together near the end of making all the animations, 
while they were being drawn, sequenced, and corrected for any mistakes they may have had, they were all saved as PNGs, which are much more easily previewed in Windows. I settled on 256 color BMPs after having some difficulty achieving transparency with PNG files on Windows 95. When you first open Attituner and create a blank template for a cursor, it will have a blank icon in the first frame of the template. This frame can't be deleted until there are more frames to accompany it. When you import any frame, it will give you a few options, including the ability to add transparency. Once all the frames of the animation are in order, you can specify how fast you'd like it to move. I don't want the owl to move too fast, nor do I want them moving too slow. The second animation is busier. It has 14 unique frames and two repeats for a total of 16 frames. Each line of the binary code represents a letter, starting with the letter N, the lines scroll up, spelling out Night Owl Tech Support, the name of the comic, before it shifts to the owl, who's looking up at it. The owl then opens and closes his mouth like he's saying something, and then looks down at the end as if he's looking at it loop. Since the animation has a lot of frames, and a lot of them look similar from a distance, I want it to move a little bit faster, so the second animation is going to be set to 10 jiffies. Here are the final results. In both icon and cursor form, they work properly, and they have transparency on real hardware. They also work just fine on Windows 10, but my screen capturing tool only captures one frame of the mouse cursor, so I had to record the screen with my phone. In the words of Chop Chop Master Onion from Parappa the Rapper, that's it for today. If you'd like to see what Night Owl tech support is all about for yourself, I recently launched a page on Webtoon for it and the link is in the description. I've been making Night Owl tech support comics on and off for my own amusement since 2014. It took me a while to find a way to draw it digitally and be happy with the end result. Until they create angry mobs, I intend to keep making new comics and uploading them somewhere. The original comic was at a resolution that was too big for Webtoon, and it got messed up shrinking it down, so here it is closer to its original size. Thanks for watching.